Hey guys, helping if you're gonna be doing a reaction to the totally legit recap on your marks, my little pony, season six, episode four. So anyway, let's get to it. A three, a two, and a one. Here we go again. So, the CMCs are trying to have their first meeting since getting their cutie marks, but they're way too preoccupied with staring at their asses to concentrate. <laughs> and so true. how we feel. <laughs> so, Apple <laughs> oh all right, God. guys, let's go get our cutie marks. And Sweetie Bill and Scoots are like, uh, dude. And she's like, oh, yeah. And I'm just like, dude, that happens to me a lot, too. Basically, what? what this all amounts to is that these three are getting older and they're developing different interests. Scootaloo likes being an adrenaline junkie. Sweetie Belle likes finding new and more elaborate ways to be boring. And right, fuck you, buddy. Apple Bloom likes desperately clinging to a rapidly dissolving childhood. They try doing some shit together like singing and potion making and volunteer work with the mentally challenged. Hey. And finally, scout f*** yourself. Goots is like, dude, why don't we still be best friends but not drag each other into every stupid thing one of us wants to do? And Sweetie Belle is like, wow, that sounds totally reasonable and productive. And Apple Bloom agrees, even though it feels like they've punched a gaping, aching hole in her heart. Because she's already learning how to bottle up and stifle her emotions like an adult. Then she sings the most Aww. beautiful song I've ever heard in my fucking life. And I don't remember what happens next because I was crying. Anyway, Aww. look at Sweetie Belle. Look at that smile and the joy in her eyes. She just made the shittiest scarf in the world <laughs> and she is fucking stoked about it. And you know she's thinking like, I'm not good at this, but I'm going to keep trying until I get better. And it's going to be so much fun. You fucking tiny horses with your relentless positivity and your self-esteem. Just try it once, fail, quit forever, and feel ashamed shame like a normal person. <sighs> this is it, Larry. You're finally gonna do something right. <laughs> so Sweetie Bee and Scoots had a great day and Apple Bloom is sunk into a psychotic depression because she knows that this is how it all starts. Pretty soon they'll all be living in different cities and only see each other at New Year's and they'll have I've to been be like, there. hey, what's up? How have you been? Even though none of them actually, actually I think I went through every single depression phase. sibling-like relationship they had in their youth is dead and all that's left is an awkward feeling of obligation. Sure, they'll start talking about things they did back in the day like, oh hey, remember that time we were happy and life felt like it had meaning and after a few drinks it'll almost feel like there's still a connection between them and they'll share all their online handles and be like dude i will totally friend you on myspace and follow you on twimbler and we should get together sometime and eat spaghetti or whatever then the next day when they sober up they'll go right back to never getting around to it and feeling that nagging little guilt and sadness gnawing at the backs of their minds because they know it's never gonna be like it was so why even try so or, you know, true just Sick of your shit, Larry. <laughs> My take on it. Maybe she's thinking something else. I don't know. And so she's like, why do you guys hate me now? And Scoots is like, dude, we just want to have hobbies. What's the big deal? But I don't like change. Dude, Apple Bloom, life changes all the time and you just have to deal with it, you know? I mean, if you can't cope with change, your life is just going to be a waking nightmare of constant dread. Yep. You wonder whether or not today will be the one that shatters your fragile illusion of a status quo. You'll be a reclusive, nervous wreck of a person and that kind of life's not worth living. Yep, that's, that's me. me. Dude, I tried and I'm shit at everything except the stuff I already do. And so Sweetie B is like, you don't have to be good at something to have fun. And I'm like, no, God damn it, Sweetie Belle. You don't have to be good at something to have fun. You have some weird inherent sense of self-worth and confidence. Normal people don't have that. If I'm not good at something, I fucking hate myself. Anyway, AB yep, finally realizes that too. the world isn't black and white and that when someone says, I'm busy, can we hang out later? It doesn't mean that they aren't your friend. It just means they're busy, but they want to hang out later. And that's actually a pretty damn appropriate revelation for someone who's like 12. So she stops being a clingy asshole and everything's fine. The end. <laughs> 
Oh, wait, wait, I forgot, I forgot. So earlier when I was busy sobbing into my TV dinner and chugging box wine, Apple Bloom met this asshole who's really good at dancing but is scared of doing it in front of people. And I'm like, dude, fuck you. If I was good at anything besides jacking off and drinking, I would totally do it in front of people. I mean, I do both those things in front of people constantly, but nobody likes it. Right, so the same thing is doing the best crowd. and help give the dude confidence to follow his passion and blah blah blah. He gets his cutie mark and that's that. There's a common thread running throughout MLP that I, and I'm sure all of you have noticed. Ponies who are good at something but have failed to realize their full potential. This guy just needed some encouragement and voila, he found his destiny. <clears throat> Our good friend Glimmy is another great example. A brilliant sorceress whose emotional baggage led her down a morally ambiguous path. But hey, now that she's realized the error of her ways, she's kicking ass. I mean, she unfucked Trixie. What else needs to be done <laughs> as a public service? Even Diamond fucking Tiara, the most consistent antagonist over the last five seasons of this show, wasn't really a villain, just a victim of horrible parenting, and she turned out to be a pretty cool chick when she learned how to use her talents for good. I've thought about this a lot, and it seems like there aren't really any intrinsically bad ponies, just those who've lost their way. Everyone in Equestria has a true place and has the potential for a fulfilling life, and that... More than rainbow magic or talking horses is what makes it a fantasy world. Okay. I need an A, a sticky gooey, and when I get this. That's all of it, I guess. Hope you guys liked my reaction, and yeah, this obviously from DWK, so don't forget to subscribe to him, and uh, have a nice day.